today our topic is on the root cause analysis and its benefit to the practice. Yeah. So basically, what happened is that uh, today is the effective date. Yeah. Under the ISQM, we have eight elements. All right. Under the monitoring and remediation, basically this is the last part. That's why we are in the uh, ISQM 4.0. Yeah. So we have gone through the number one, number two, and number three. So this will be the final part. <clears throat> So on the root cause, basically root cause is a subset of the under the monitoring and remediations. Yeah. So uh, the ISQM has emphasized the importance of the root cause analysis under the monitoring and remediations. Yeah. So basically, I'll be going through the introductions, some of the RCA in an audit firm uh, applications uh, in the ISQM one RCA the processes and also how it applies to the smaller practice. Yeah benefit and also some appendices. Uh, so if I have time, I will go through some of the internal findings, uh, the actual uh, findings that we have gone through yeah, over the years. All right. So uh, if you if you look at here, basically is the trees. Yeah. Uh, root cause is something that is uh, underneath the, the, the soil. Yeah. So if you look at the trees, you can always see the surface, only the symptoms. If you can see the tr trees is dying, potentially the, the root of the trees is uh, flooded with water or is suffocating. Yeah. So you, you may not know until you dig out the, the things. So the reason why the uh, standard asks us to uh, implement this is to identify the, the real root cause of a problem, uh, which is significant to the firm so that it doesn't reoccur. Yeah. So I have mentioned the word significant. All right. So in, in to, to identify what issues that is significant is very much depending to one firm on the threshold. So each firm has different threshold, you know, uh, bigger firms, you have a higher threshold, medium firm have their own threshold and the smaller firm as well. Yeah. So uh, the scalability, the word scalability, I think Raj has used just now has been keep on emphasizing under the ISQM one. So it's very important to take note on that. Yeah. All right. So um, under the I cost analysis, uh, I'll call it short in short RCA. Uh, RCA is not something new. All right. Uh, it has been used in a lot of manufacturing industry. Yeah. Uh, if you can see some of the cars last time they, or the electronics parts under the, under the factory, when it come out, they will stamp a QC control check. Right. But now a lot of, uh, cars, if they issued out, you know, uh, it will be stamped as a QA, right? So quality assurance. Yeah. So, uh, these are the, some of the, uh, we'll call that the, the website for you to, uh, to research on how to do, uh, RCA. Yeah. So mine tools is basically a resources sites. Yeah. Uh, six Sigma, six Sigma is a very important, uh, tool here to identify root cause. So a lot of, uh, slides that I'm going to present, uh, involve a lot of six Sigma. Yeah. And also, uh, ASQ. So it's an American society for quality. So these are some of the website that you can uh, refer to do your uh, root cause analysis. Yeah. So basically RCA is a systematic process to identify root cause of a problem or an event and also approaches for responding to them. Yeah. So uh, you have a basic ideas. Yeah. Uh, to have to how, how to identify the root cause, but more importantly, the standards do not want you just to put up the fires basically uh, in, sh in in other words you plaster it yeah so uh, the standard wants you to find out the problems and then try to prevent them uh, the the key word here i would say is the reoccurrence yeah i think uh, rush also has mentioned just now reoccurrence i think a lot of uh, audit firms uh, especially the smaller firms has uh, this problem yeah reoccurrence findings so how how do the firm can stop all these problems all right <clears throat> All right, uh, the goals, what is the goals to identify the root cause? Yeah. So you, you need to, uh, take note that, uh, the actions of you having, uh, this root cause analysis, uh, is to prevent the reoccurrence, uh, develop. Yeah. The keyword, uh, reoccurrence I have uh, mentioned, uh, quite a bit, uh, okay. So, uh, in terms of the goals, this is RCA is to analyze the problem, to identify what happened how it happened and why it happened. So you have to ask a lot of questions. So uh, all the WH questions, what, when, why, where, whom, 
Uh, later on, we'll be developing a checklist on how to uh, mitigate all this and how the documentation works around this. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So, um, yeah, let me go to the next page. All right. So, focusing this on uh, the principle of the root cause is focusing on the corrective measures of a root cause rather than sticking in the plaster approach. Yeah, I mentioned just now. So, you need to have a more effective than simply simply treating the symptom of the problem so it may address the immediate problem but not under under like addressing the underlying problem so it's a very important that you need to identify the actual root cause so that you can always uh clear off the problem so that it will prevent from reoccurring yeah um one one key thing is that um usually when you have identified one root cause of a problem uh it could be more than one root cause right when you have one problems and vice versa so it could be one problem that it have a multiples of uh, root cause yeah and also you need to understand why the event has occurred all right um the one of the key things here uh you need to have to develop a systematic process to back up the evidence yeah so uh, i would say is the documentations uh, i think most of the smaller firms will have this problem whereby documentations issues yeah so you may not have uh you you have a root cause analysis have been done up in your mind probably uh back in your mind somewhere yeah but it was always not documented in the uh, files and the working papers all right <clears throat> so these are some of the rca methods that we always use um the first one will be the five y analysis yeah uh i will go through that in a while um, this is a more commonly used. Uh, so as a partners of the firm, usually you'll be asking a lot of uh, why questions. Yeah, uh, why happened? Why this? Why that? You know, All right? So number two is the fault tree. Uh, I have a slides on that also. I will go through that in a while. Pareto analysis. Uh, what is Pareto analysis? I'm sure you that you heard that 80-20 rules. Yeah. Uh, uh, in 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 usual casual way of saying that you know 80% of the wealth is held by 20% of the populations, but in Pareto analysis is 80% of the benefit come from 20% of work. So conversely, 80% of the problem can always be traced back to the 20% of the causes. So later we'll be having a root cause, uh, the causes. So a lot of causes that uh, we, we need to identify. Yeah. So basically, these uh, methods is to identify the problems area that will have that will give the uh, practitioner or the company the biggest payoff. So meaning you will be focusing on the 20% that caused the 80% of the problem. Yeah. Uh, fishbone diagram uh, basically is the uh, fishbone analysis. Uh, you have a diagram looks like a fishbone. Uh, I'll have a slides on that also. Uh, go through that in a while. Yeah. So uh, number five is the failure mode and effect analysis. Um, this is basically is uh, one of the six sigma tool. It's a proactive method for evaluating a process where it might fail and the impact. So uh, a lot of um, manufacturing or automotive will be using this uh, a lot. Yeah, Causal factor tree basically is the uh, logical hierarchy that, caused the, that causes all the leading effects and also the consequences. It's very much similar to the fault tree. Yeah? So changes analysis is one of the analysis on the testing of the deviation if you have uh, changes in certain of the work done, then you will come up with uh, uh, another results. Yeah. So uh, another also is the barrier analysis, uh, understanding all the barriers that uh, all the firms is facing or even the manufacturing company is facing and also the root cause. So you, you basically, these are some of the methods that uh, uh, people are using out there. Yeah. So we can use this as a basis to implement in our firm on how to identify the root cause. So basically, it's more of a set of documents that you can develop up, yeah. So uh, I would say that this will be our most commonly used, yeah, the five ways method. Uh, this is also under the Six Sigma. You don't need to involve a lot of uh, data segment. You don't need to do hypothesis. You don't need to do regression. Basically, this method is the easiest method of all by asking uh, a lot of why questions. Why this? Why that? Uh, Basically, it is a good rule of uh, the, 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 a lot of people will ask me why five. So it's just a rule of thumb. Lah, yeah? uh, with five or more questions or less, then you will potentially uh, identify the potential root cause of certain problems. All right. 
Okay, uh, in terms of the fault tree, fault tree is a is a is a is a decision graph, a uh, tree like graph. Yeah. Uh, basically, I I would say I will explain through this graph. Uh, is quite understandable. Yeah. So if let's say the car doesn't start, then you will try to analyze. Yeah. So is it because the car in a park parking mode or is it in the drive mode? So if you are in the drive mode, definitely you cannot start the car, right? So then you have to assess whether is your foot on the brakes. If your foot is not on the brakes, you also cannot start the car. Hopefully you all are driving an uh, auto car like myself. Like, yeah. So uh, also on the other side, yeah, it could be potentially is due to the electrical force. So electrical force, it could be a starter, it could be a broken wire, it could be your, your, your car run out of a battery. Yeah. So uh, the, 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 on the left hand side, it is talking about the user of it. Yeah. So are you operating the right way? Yeah. On the, on the other hand, on the right hand side, we are talking about is there component failure? So it is something, a diagram like this, then we can further analyze uh, a lot of uh, problems. Yeah. Uh, I have some of the uh, actual examples in later on in the slides. Uh, okay. Uh, another method that is being always used is on the fish bone. Yeah. Uh, fish bone is on the cause and effect diagram is also called as Ishikawa diagram. Yeah. Uh, why is called a, as a fish bone uh, diagram? Yeah. Fish bone RCA method is because it looks like a fish bone. Uh, I'm not too sure if you can see my cursor. Yeah. So every time that you have identified the problems, yeah. So uh, you will have a main primary causes. Uh, which are highlighted in the yellow, all right? Okay, if you can see, uh, then when the machines fail, let's say for example in this scenario, when the machine fail, there will be some causes to it, cause to the machines, all right? And then there could be a sub causes to the machines, yeah? So it could be a man. So a man, let's say the cause is caused by a human. The human is it caused potentially due to a new staff hired? Or is it because recently there is a pay cut or there is a strike? So these are the things that uh, this diagram will depict all the things uh, through the brainstorming and also the conversations between the managements. Yeah. So it is a very important tool. Uh, some of the methods of the that you can use to identify the uh, RCA. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next one. How my RCA be performed? So this is the classic example on how the preliminary questions for you to uh, frame the basis for certain actions. So you might select a few of these uh, engagements, yeah. So you can filter, right? So most firm, uh, the smaller firm, I would say, basically will do a lot of uh, root cause. Basically, you just go through everything, yeah. So if the bigger firms uh, when you do your root cause analysis, especially you have a network firm, you know, uh, you have different branches, then potentially there could be a lot to analyze. Yeah. So uh, that's why the standard uh, allows you that everything inside here are scalable. All right. So uh, over here, what you can do is you can filter through which are the priorities. So you as an engagement partner or the managing partner of the firms, you can always filter out this uh, the RCA. So you'll be focusing on the high risk job on in terms of the size and also the public interest entity. So let's say if you have a PIE, a listed company, definitely I would say that you should focus on that particular job. Yeah. And then also the next one will be on the certain particular reviews such as uh, cold review, hot review. Uh, hot review is basically some of the engagements that you are doing uh, on before you sign off, you have another reviewer to come and review the files before you sign off. So it is not EQCR. It is another layer of cold review, but cold review is after you sign off, then only they come. But hot review is immediate during the tenor of the review itself. Yeah. Some of the bigger firms, uh, the big four, they, they, they apply a uh, hot review as well, especially when there is uh, international reviews in the, in the particular firms. Yeah. All right. So the next one is on the reviews with disappointing results. All right. So some of the some of the files the partner have gone through. You know you have seen uh, a lot of review points. Then uh, I think it would be good that use that particular files that uh, use that to do some RCA. Yeah. 
So last but not least is those most common one. Uh, I think maybe like administrative matters, you know, uh, you didn't, you didn't bank, bank confirmation, you didn't file in the original copy, you just file in the photocopy or, or confirmation that already sent out, you didn't keep a copy in the files, things like that. Yeah. So these are the, some common mistakes. So as, as a partner, I would say that you, you should prioritize which are the things that you want to develop the RCA. Yeah. So it is uh, very important that you prioritize. Otherwise, there will be a lot more work for you. Yeah. Remember that. <clears throat> so when you have uh, the results of the RCA, when you have done up everything, so uh, you can consider it on how you want to remedy it, uh, either in individual basis or together, yeah, or a combinations on a certain areas. Yeah. So take note on that. Okay. Um, this is the approach that we use to perform the RCA. Yeah. Uh, most importantly is that I'm sure most of us here are partners of the firms. Yeah. Or a senior management in the firms, uh, which potentially has been in industry for at least more than five years already. Right. So based, you, you, you will definitely know what is the problems that are happening now in your firms. Yeah. So basically what I'm trying to say is that you won't be starting off as a fresh uh, worksheet. Yeah. So you have something in mind already. I would say, I would say as a, as a partner of the firm, you would at least know 70% of the root cause. All right. So that's why I mentioned just now, uh, it's a matter of your documentation. Yeah. So not all firms will have their QA department, a proper QA department, a technical department, but all this, the, the partners, the sole proprietor have to do, but no choice. Yeah. Uh, of course you can always engage a third party to, uh, to do the review and all that. Yeah. All right. So, uh, the approach here is the, the first one we go through one by one. Yeah. Uh, discussion with the individual who identified the issues. So over here, these are the uh, examples of the internal reviewers, uh, those under the cold file or hot file review, and also external reviewers, such as your regulators. Uh, it could be AOB, it could be uh, MIA as well, or any uh, MACFA. You know, MACFA nowadays, they will do uh, uh, some of the uh, accounts review, financial statements review. Yeah. So uh, firstly, you have to discuss with them yeah, to identify the issues. Secondly is on the asking the engagement team to complete a questionnaire. So it will back to the, uh, the, the, the RCA methods that I have uh, mentioned just now. So maybe what you can do is you can use the five Y analysis that you keep on asking questions. Yeah. Basically this is to get their perspective of the potential root cause and as well as uh, info gathering. So basically these are the info gathering uh, stage. Uh, same goes to uh, number three, uh, discussion with individuals involved in the engagement. Yeah. So uh, who are the per person involved in the engagement? So you have to ask from the bottom until the, the top. So from the, from the audit juniors until the managers, the managers, the directors, and also the partners. All right. Uh, same goes to EQCR as well. Yeah. So uh, now we call it EQR. Now today is the effective date. Yeah. So EQR is also part of the engagement team. So it's a very important. So you have to go through the entire levels to identify the real root cause of the problems. All right. So the next one is on the review of working papers in the engagements. So why do you need to review the working papers? Yeah. So it's, it is a matter of whether or not the engagement team has done the required procedures. So meaning to say, let's say, for example, uh, the smaller firms, uh, I have been working in a smaller firm before. So you, you probably have a, have a system such as AXP, CCH. Potentially, they have their own, own uh, audit program. So uh, whether or not the staff has been uh, following these audit programs, yeah. And also uh, the fifth one is on the review of supporting documents, whether or not the templates and the programs are updated. Let's say you are using uh, a certain software, yeah. So which have the audit program, whether or not all these are being complied with or all these are being updated, yeah. All these templates, yeah. Maybe like for example, uh, last year we have some new standards, whether or not that particular standards, is it inside your programs? Yeah. All right. The next one is on the discussion with those responsible for the methodology and trainings. So, uh, in some larger firms, they may have a technical department. They may have a QA department. So, uh, you, you may want to ask them. So whether or not, you know, when you know, there's a new standards, whether or not all these standards has been, uh, put in place. 
and also being implemented and also launched to everyone in the staff. So to identify the effective dates, yeah. All right. So on, on the next one is on the analysis of the collect data collected. So once you have gathered all these informations, you will need to see whether there's any correlations of these findings. As a partners, I'm sure you know roughly what will be the problems are, yeah. And also uh, number eight on the discussion with other contributors, see whether or not you have any specialists or any expert like valuers, you know, uh, tax, uh, tax consultants patterns, uh, stuff like that. You have to understand their perspective as well. So basically, this approach is for you to drill down what is the real root cause of the problems. Yeah. So it's very important on that. Okay. Um, the, the next question is who should perform the RCA? Uh, under this, there's no fast or, or, or right rules. Yeah. So, uh, but the most key, key important points here to identify to, to mention to you guys is that uh, the skills and seniority you need to consider as well as the professional skepticism that the person has yeah uh, especially that person must be able to ask challenging questions and also the the second key important point is that you must have sufficient time to explore the root cause and also insufficient depth yeah so without the sufficient depth you may not real to, uh, you may not know the real root cause of the problems, yeah. Especially if you ask the staff, the staff may not tell you, yeah. All right. So uh, I will go through some of it, yeah. The audit team itself. Uh, why the audit team? Because they are the most familiar one, yeah. So they can tell you what are the problems. But the question is here with a big but. Uh, their 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 response may not be objective. So you have to analyze, yeah. So a third party. Uh, you need to consider the competency of the third party as well, especially in the smaller firm. You may not have another person to help you to analyze that. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, you will be subject to your uh, objectivity. Yeah. All right. So someone outside the audit functions, uh, the next one, uh, it may not be auditor. Yeah. So they, the, the pros is that they may give you a dis different perspective, yeah, a fresh inputs to you. But the, the, the problems, they may not have the sufficient knowledge. Yeah? Uh, I think the best one is the person who carry out the review, uh, which is your pro potentially your QA functions. Uh, all right. And also the member of the central functions, such as the QA department, technical, and also training. Some larger firm, they will have all these departments in place. Yeah? So it's not a conclusive uh, uh, things who should perform. Everyone should be involved. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so question is, when should RCA be performed? Uh, I would say RCA should be performed as soon as possible. Yeah, so there will be two stages to this uh, on the information gathering and also the root cause identification. Why, uh, why you need to perform it as soon as possible? Because the staff that perform this, they have a fresh mind because it's just being completed, right? And secondly, I think uh, most of us are facing right now shortage of staff. So the staff, the tendency of resigning is high. Yeah. So uh, potentially the staff, if you do it later, maybe say like six months down the road after the completion or archiving of the file, the staff may potentially already resign. So you may not have the person to ask the five why questions. Right. So. Uh, all right. So the, the important points here is that um, when I mentioned as soon as possible, uh, I, I hope that it triggered your thought process is that, you know, um, audit is done on a yearly basis. Yeah. So you have a one year gap cycle to perform your analysis, perform your, your, your uh, we'll call that your findings to check whether any deficiencies. After you find the deficiency, you have to find your root cause analysis. After you find the root cause analysis, you have to do all your implementation stage remediations. Yeah. So uh, all this you have to time it accordingly. Yeah. If you let's say just now my 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 example is that uh, you do six months down the road already. Yeah. So you potentially you may have only six months to implement all that. Yeah. So uh, timing may not be on your side if if you are to do the RCA. Yeah. So if you are delaying the RCA, potentially you may not be able to identify the real root cause of the problem. Yeah. So take note on the timing. Uh, preferably is to do on the soonest possible. Yeah. All right. RCA in an audit firm. So 
uh, RCA has been used very frequently in the manufacturing. Uh, basically, especially uh, Six Sigma, uh, I have mentioned just now. Basically, Six Sigma is developed by Motorola, if anyone uh, do not know. Yeah? Motorola, when they do the, what we call that, the plant, all that, they are using Six Sigma methods. Yeah? All right. So in the context of auditing, so RCA is basically is a process for identifying the root cause of a review or inspection findings. So when you do RCA, uh, I would say the entire ISQM, um, because myself, I also do internal audit. Yeah, uh, you are basically having an internal audit department in your firm. All right. So you will you will have findings, then you will have your reasons, you have your risk, and then you will have your remediations. Then you have a date when to remediate it. Yeah. Then you have to present to the board. So some something like that. All right. And also when we have the risk assessment, so it, it is very similar to enterprise risk management. So uh, enterprise risk management, they are they are they are what we'll call that uh, reference point for you is on the COSO framework and also ISO. So it, it will help you, you know, guide you along how you want to do uh, the entire ISQM. Yeah. So I, I would strongly suggest you you can have a look at some of the internal audit, uh, how, how people do your internal audit and also a COSO and ISO framework. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So um, findings, what is findings? Yeah, they, they, they could be many findings, but it may not be a deficiency. Yeah, I think Raj has presented just now. Uh, you can have a lot of findings. It depends whether or not it is a deficiency. Once you find the deficiency, then you have to check whether the severity of it. Yeah, so whether or not uh, is it a weaknesses or is a failing. So it is very important that you can, you have to classify uh, into these two categories, yeah? the weaknesses or failing. So if failing then is terrible, I think you better uh, act fast on it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, how come I go back? All right. So engagement review, uh, engagement quality control and internal inspection. Uh, I think uh, most of us are doing already internal review. Most of the senior management, probably a manager and above or partners, is basically in charge of reviewing the files. So these are the when you when you come up with your review points, these are your potential findings ready. Yeah. And then secondly, it will be on your quality control reviewer. Uh, now it's called uh, EQR. Yeah. So your EQR is one of the person who will be carrying out before you sign off. Yeah. So these are the two first layer of findings your potential uh, deficiencies yeah and also comes on the internal inspections so some firms they do it more frequently half yearly you know some uh, under the standard you need to do on a yearly basis uh, yeah so it's a very important whether or not uh, it's a it's a cold file review or a hot file review all right so i'll go through quickly because uh, quite short of time all right uh, for this part uh, basically, it is taken from the ISQM. Yeah, I think Raj has gone through in details just now. Um, on the root cause analysis, I would say uh, I've mentioned just now is a small subset of the entire remediation, monitoring and remediation part. Yeah, so you can see over here on the corner bottom right, uh, investigation the root cause. So it's a very small, but I would say it is a very critical to the audit firm. Yeah. So uh, this is how you identify all the problems and how you want to resolve it. Yeah. So I won't go through these slides. Uh, the key important points that I want to highlight is this one is on the, in the, the point number two, in order to evaluate the severity and pervasiveness of the deficiency, you need to investigate the root cause. Yeah. So in order, when you identify your root cause, then only you know whether is it severe and pervasive without doing your root cause analysis, you, you won't know how severe your problem are, right? Okay, uh, I won't be going through this. All right, so this is the analysis, root cause analysis process. Yeah, uh, I'll be going quickly. So uh, there will be, there's a, there are five stages on this, gather and manage evidence, problem statement, analyze cause and effect, solutions, and the final report. So when you gather evidence, how do you gather evidence? Yeah. So you have to you have to ask the people, the people uh, which I have mentioned just now, 
that it could be your QA team members, it can be your own internal, the engagement team. You have to ask from the bottom to the top and or top to the bottom. Yeah. And also you have to ensure all the programs are in place. All right. Uh, what procedure are involved, whether all the programs is it formal or informal, is the program being followed? Yeah. So and the environment, the environment, whether is it the client collaborative, collaborative, yeah, the cohesions in the audit team as well as whether or not there's a support given to the audit team. Uh, on top of this, there is a schedule, whether or not there's a work pressures, yeah, uh, meeting the deadlines. I believe all these are quite a standard problems are happening in the audit firms, yeah. So, uh, and also the system. So let's say, for example, you have your CCA system or AXP system. So you have to gather these, uh, these items, yeah, which I have already mentioned just now. So after that, you need to come up with a problem statement. Yeah. So problem statement is on the number two. All right. So problem statement, the three key items uh, that you need to put here, the statements, I would say is the questions of when, where. Number three is on the actual and the potential impact. Yeah. So you need to document down what is the problem, you know, uh, when did it happen, where did it happen, and what is the actual impact. So if you notice here, yeah, uh, I, I of course, definitely, when you come up with a problem statement, you need to go through the uh, the relevant thought process. Uh. If you if you can see here, there is a firm reputations. There's also a revenue cost. Yeah. So it consider the thought process will put you through uh, to consider the quantitative as well as the qualitative side of it. Yeah. So it is a very important. You have to consider these two elements. All right. So the next point is on the analyze the cause and effects. So what is cause and effect? For example, in these slides here, uh, what causes the effect? So basically, you have the work is not completed, but you have already delivered the financial statement to the client. But of course, in this case, it's the audit committees. Uh, yeah. So uh, some SMEs definitely you are giving it to the board of directors. Yeah. So it is a very big problem, right? Okay. So and also in this analysis, you have to analyze further. All right. Every time the cost occurs, does it result in the effect? Yeah. So, uh, of course, I would, I would say that, is it true that all the financial statements that you are delivering out without gathering all the in evidence that you are required before you sign off? Of course, no, right? Because uh, potentially what you are do, you, what you're facing is you fail to meet the minimum evidence to put in the file. Yeah. So that's why you have a cost number two, uh, or did fail to meet the minimum evidence standards. You you unable to get get some certain documents before you sign off the accounts. Yeah, so you have to analyze further so that then you will reflect back whatever the the, the, the root cause uh, methods that I have shared with you, the fish bones effect, and also the uh, fault if uh, the fault trees. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'll go through this part first. Ignore the uh, the one in the rectangular. Yeah. So you analyze further, like for example, uh, the, the the potential problems is that. The, the audit team wanted to meet deadlines, you know, unaware of the audit lack sufficient evidence, uh, requests not completed on timely basis, the client did not understand uh, what is required. Yeah. So you have to uh, go out further to analyze. Yeah. So that's why it's called a sub causes. All right. So when you implement the solution, make sure it is effective. All right. Implementable. You don't, you don't propose something that you cannot implement yourself and also provide a positive return on investment. Of course, I believe it's on uh, uh, time savings, all right? And also a solution that would not cause other problems. You don't fix this and then like 10 problems coming out again. Yeah, so it's a very important that you have uh, to implement all these uh, solutions, yeah? So from the solution, the rectangular one basically are the solutions. So you have to, uh, as the QA, QA team members, yeah, or the sole proprietor, you have to further analyze your solutions into all your root causes. Yeah. All right. So in a report, uh, how do you want to do the reporting of it? Yeah. So the reporting of it, what you need to do is on the problem statement, uh, which I've mentioned just now, a summary of the events, uh, and the, the cause and effect charts, what is the proposed solution, list of the team members, those, those person that is involved and any other remaining tasks. Why there's any other remaining tasks? Because you, you, you may, you, the remediation is not, like immediate, right? So you may potentially wait until the next uh, cycles or the next engagement to do 
So potentially it will be under your remaining task. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So in, in, in short, this audit quality issues is a significant problem because it's undermining the trust. And, and also it's a, this problem offer a valuable learning opportunity that must not be overlooked. Yeah. It's a best way for the uh, organization to learn and improve. All right. Uh, I will be, yeah. So for this one on the RCA for small practices, um, see the positive side of it. Yeah. Um, because, uh, in, in, in my firm, we have, uh, we started to implement all this. Yeah. Uh, the RCA, uh, what we can see is that, uh, these are some of the things that I think is good to share. Uh, look at the positive side of it. Yeah. Even though it's additional work to you. You, but in the long run, definitely uh, the audit firm will benefit from it. Yeah. So improve out to the recovery rates and the profitability. All right. So maybe the first year itself, you 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 may uh, spend quite a bit of times to stabilize. You know, beef up the team and all that. Uh, but moving forward, once the, the the base is good, you know, uh, recovery rates and profitability will definitely come in. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I think one of the questions just now do ask whether any positive RCA. Yes, there is a positive RCA. So positive RCA is good that you can you can share this to the to the to the respective uh, team members to the whole entire firms so that all the firm members uh, uh, carry out the same thing yeah so and also it is a very motivating things and also very rewarding to those person who have all these good practices yeah uh, also share the learnings yeah so uh, you can share it with your other partners yeah and also other audits uh, auditors all right. And also, I think another another key point is on the improving of other services. Yeah, so uh, I'm sure most of the audit firm is not only doing audit. Yeah, you you have your taxations potentially. You may have your consulting services, so it will benefit your other department as well. Yeah, eradicating recurring issues. Uh, this one I think uh is 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 a nightmare for a lot of audit firms. Yeah, yeah. So uh, recurring audit audit issues. You a lot of firms. Uh, potentially are facing, especially, you know, uh, the staffing issues that we have. Yeah. So if you can put an end on to this, it, it it's, it, then you can, uh, save a lot of time to do this. And also you can focus in other, other areas, like do your business better. Right. All right. Uh, the next, the next one is on the, don't be put off by the names. Yeah. Don't, don't think that root cause is a very problematic areas. Yeah uh which i mentioned just now chances are you already carrying out some form of rca in your practice even it's not by the names so that's why i mentioned just now it potentially is the back back behind your mind already so you know what's the problem just just that uh it may not be 100 percent being carried out and documented yeah uh all right okay so uh the next one is to take action yeah so what you need to do is you need to develop an action plan. Uh, like my firm, we have an SOP, uh, how to develop, uh, the RCA. Yeah. Uh, then we will follow through, you know, uh, make sure every, all these, uh, root cause are being followed up. There's a timeline for it. And then we will follow up in, uh, next year. So our firm, we have yearly, uh, meetings. Yeah. with entire firm. So we will brief all the action plans. Uh, what is all the findings or the efficiency, uh, all the deficiencies and also the root cause. So, uh, and also the follow up for the last year. Yeah. So this is what, uh, my practice is, uh, in our firm. Yeah. So we have all that. So everybody is, uh, notified. Yeah. So they should know what to do. All right. So, uh, I think the other point is that, you know, you, 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 it's good that you have a, a, a remark in your working paper, you know, rather than, uh, if the juniors take on the working paper, then you'll be just keep on roll forward the same working papers throughout the years, then without really uh, uh, addressing the issues. Yeah. So maybe there's a remark or any checklist that you can put on every files, then it will be good. Yeah. So some firms I, I noticed like uh, AOB, they have AOB findings, then they have a checklist for AOB. Yeah. So, so that uh, it won't reoccur again, those findings. Yeah. Or the deficiencies. All right. So uh, RCA. Uh, will be refined over time and you have to start somewhere because it is, it is not one off. Yeah. So take note, it is not one off. It's true time. You have to develop it over and over again. So with more RCA you do, then you'll be more 
more familiar with it. Yeah. So then it will be eventually you have a more higher quality and a more efficient audit, right? So especially for the uh, smaller firms, yeah. So I think it's good that you know you 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 can outsource it. You can outsource to someone who the firm who has the capabilities to help you to do to do the review. Yeah. So uh, some something that you can consider as well. All right. Uh, decide who to who will do it. Uh, the partners, the managers, and then uh, RCA is extension of to a regular hot and cold file review. Yeah. Uh, it is not only the reviews, also the engagement itself. Yeah. And also potentially you can let your juniors auditor uh, some involvement. Uh, just now I also mentioned uh, with the right expertise and experience with challenging questions, right? So you may give these juniors to see the different perspective, yeah, a fresh ideas for improvement. Uh, it's good that you 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 make them in charge, yeah. Now now the the millennium millennial yeah likes to being empowered, yeah. All right. Uh, okay, so um, these are some of the benefits. Yeah, uh, I have mentioned just now. Definitely, in terms of your time, you will reduce your 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 time spent on each of the uh, uh, issues, your findings. Yeah, and also uh, identify the failures. Right, so you have identified what is the pro potential problems and put the respective remediations so it won't reoccur again. Uh, improve safety and reliability. Why I mentioned that just now is that uh, nowadays we are facing with regulatories, right? So uh, there are MIAs, AOBs, and uh, all the all the bodies out there, lah. Yeah. So it's good that we have uh, all these things in place. All right. And also uh, the enhanced time to mark. So basically, uh, this is to identify any uh, non-update of the audit program. So let's say if you have an uh, a wrong audit program is being being circulated out to the firm. And then it will take a lot more time for you to retrieve back and to redo whatever uh, that is uh, wrongfully circulated out. Yeah. So uh, get it right the first time uh, is very critical. Right. Uh, I think my time is quite uh, close yet. Uh, I think I uh, just give me another two more minutes. Yeah. So um, this is our internal findings. I won't go through in details. Uh, some of the root causes like lack of documentation skill, lack of trainings. Yeah lack of understandings and also lack of professional skepticism, judgment and documentation skill. Uh, also, uh, some of the actual root cause the problems are file unable to archive due to the uh, MCO. Yeah. Uh, and also the uh, understanding of the ISA 540. Yeah. Because uh, recently uh, it was uh, launched. I think these are the last few years. Yeah. So these are some of the examples of the root cause lah, that I can share with you. Uh, there are other root causes uh, I'm sure that most of us are facing, such as resources, yeah, uh, lack of experienced staff, because most of the staff now, you know, uh, going to our neighboring countries that earnings like three times plus, yeah, and also the attitude issues, yeah, whether or not you have staff that would like to cut corners, these are some of the potential root causes, and also you you have probably many millennials that are unw very unwilling to learn. To, un to learn the new things and also uh, doing uh, repetitive uh, works. Uh, right? So uh, process issues, there could be a process issue whereby do you have adequate uh, policies and procedures, whether your firm have any job monitoring and then uh, for uh, leadership issues. Uh, if there's a leadership issue, then it's a very serious offense under the ISQM already. Yeah. And the fifth one, I think most of us will have good and bad clients. Uh, so the fifth one is always the uh, client issues. Yeah. yeah.